I didn't know anything about C programming or anything when I started. Really? Um, wow. But when I started, started was years and years ago, like two years before I even put out a demo online, I was like interested in the scene. It was like, how can I sort of start to get into that? And I just, I started small. I was like, okay, what can I do? I can, I can make a cube in 3D space and maybe I'll make it so the direction buttons control its movement over this plane. And then I did it and it's like, oh, I can control this now. Now I'll maybe try to make like some level geometry. Maybe I'll try to like figure out what collision detection algorithms look like, do research on that, and just slowly, slowly built it up from there. So you just kind of took it step by step, not step trying to do step. everything at once, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Homebrew is surpassing official on Sega Saturn. For some of the most hardcore fans, the Saturn really is our future. Veteran devs of the 90s often say its metal was never truly pushed to its limits. Many of its great Japanese games were never localized to the West, and the capabilities of how this hardware can be adapted not fully realized. The bright minds of today's fan base are continuing to break down the doors of these boundaries. As we enter another homebrew contest season, we are laying witness to more steps into the greatest retro homebrew scene known to the 2020s. As this ever-growing community earns its rings, we the players get to squeeze the fruits of their hard work. This is the Sega Extreme Saturn Homebrew Contest for the console's 29th anniversary. The year is 2024. Our noble coders are following up a competition season of underdog champions. In what was dubbed the Year of the Witch, Fran Matsusaka edged out XL2's Unreal Port with his original creation, Bridget Bishop, winning the original game's category. Malenko threaded his way to the top of translation's patches with his translation of Shutoku Battle 97. He was followed closely by Gun Griffin 2 from Sam Wise of the South. And Knight of Dragon defended his title as a total tool winning the Tools and Utilities category in a two-peat with his Netlink OS. Many of our iron devs from past years, legendary translation teams and talented motherboard smiths are back for year 29. Carrying on the Saturn's nearly three-decade legacy, what incredible efforts will we lay witness to this year? Your judges for this year's contest are Crystal Lee, owner of Sound Retro Co., Industrial designer David Jimenez, cartoonist and retro appreciator Jason Steele flying in from the video game Valley, video game documentarian and Sega fanatic Genovi, creator of the legendary Joe engine Johannes Fetz, your Sega Saturn Shiro homies Saturn Dave and Patrick Trainer, from the glorious land of Scotland it's the Sega Holic, and some panda guy who thinks his opinion matters for some reason. I will look at every submission by category in the order they were submitted, starting with Original Games. Brazil's very own G. Sansigolo is submitting what appears to be the first physical release of a full-length original Saturn game since UQ Genso Kyoku Hozonban Perpetual Collection. You can straight up buy a copy of this, like a physical copy. Red Moon Lost Days is a two-disc visual novel with original illustrations and music. It is adding to an underserved genre, especially underserved in the Western world. Since its last demo, the grammar and spelling are both vastly improved. I only noticed a handful of very minor typos in this final release. It is also playable in Portuguese, Sansigolo's native language. Its plot revolves around mech generals in the year 2038. They're dealing with the political fallout of their own home country, Great China, after winning a global war. You experience several flashbacks to your childhood, coming to terms with relationships as you and your partner encounter trouble in neutral lands. The artwork looks especially nice on the CRT. As is typically the case with Sansigolo's work, the music fits this game well. My only critique is the music often resets when the console loads in a new set of text boxes. There are also many scenes where music appears to be absent. Otherwise, this is a comfy and compelling ride, feeling like a real deal indie game on your Saturn. 
Now, despite taking up two discs, the entire game can be completed in about one hour. Saturn fans who enjoy a cozy visual novel should absolutely give this a try. If you speak Portuguese, the writing might be slightly better in that language setting. I commend Sansi Golo for his continued efforts, especially doing so in two languages, and for joining a fraternal order of homebrewers to release a full-length Saturn game. At long last, Ponut64 is releasing a new game with his pony-themed 3D engine. Slidehop is a self-described almost platformer. It's a time attack game with some Spyro the Dragon meets Tony Hawk ass momentum based physics. Slide, hop, glide, and gallop in a skillful manner to attain skilled times. Use hills wisely, learn to be fast, learn to be rad, and above all be pony. You do not have to be any amount into MLP to play SH. Any Saturn fan can appreciate its consistent frame rate, dummy amount of polygon, thick draw distance, fun as heck physics, neat as heck tunes, and psychedelic texture mapping. Slide hop is neat as f So, pony can run, pony can jump. When the pony jumps on a slope, it can go really, really far. Pony has wings. Though, much like Purple Boy, Pony can only glide. The wings also possess a useful speed boost. Lastly, Pony can slide. The tutorial level properly teaches you how all of these mechanics marry each other to form a color-coded Google Calendar polygamy of movement. In each of the nine massive levels, there are three objectives. One is to collect all the hexagons from up high or in well-hidden places. Another objective is to find the flag and bring it to its post as fast as you can. You want to be under par. Nice par. That's the way to finish the round. The third, and perhaps the most fun, is to locate every goal, then speed through them in order as fast as you can. There's a mini-map for your convenience, and billboarded sprites to help guide you to the next goal. You can also set a handy spawn point to easily restart a time attack goal. The top layer face buttons control the camera in helpful ways. I asked Ponut about how Slide Hop came to be. Development started in November of 2022, mostly separated from his past, similar looking tech demos. It was originally supposed to be what is called an egg like, rife with Vinnie Vine Sauce references and NSFW fun. But he remembered that Saturn Dave's kid plays these games, so he gave it a more family-friendly spin. Another fun, fun fact, fact is some of the physics are, in a way, derived from the tribe's source code, though it is still very much unique to itself. There's this fun mechanic where if you press and hold jump again mid-air, the pony bounces into another jump. Combine this with well-timed glides and slides, and this can just build dummy momentum. I found out you can use this to grind down times and just fly through like a missile. It was at this point that something strange and unexpected happened. I began having fun. There's like this rushing sound that intensifies as you gain speed. That hooked me right in. I actually spent hours of my life grinding times in this delightful psychedelic fifth gen stank and I enjoyed it. I don't even like ponies. This game's just fun. It's a similar experience to playing steep slope sliders. You exist in Slide Hop's world, and whether you choose to attack times is up to you. My only complaint, the music is very quiet. Other than that, job well done, Ponut. Your physics engine is sublime. The tutorial level does a great job at teaching the player how it all works. The rewards of hauling pony ass across gaps in vaporwave valleys are enriching. Not to mention, the 3D Polygon engine is rendering all sorts of quads at a very steady frame rate. Slide Hop is dope. This is what we call a Sega Saturn homebrew success story. Jay Beretta has come an incredibly long way. Beretta's first homebrew contest submission came two seasons ago with Zygo. It's a standard 2D platformer demo with a couple of environments, animal transformation power-ups, and backtracking. Beretta says in the submission post, This game is how they're learning to code in C. 
Fast forward a couple of years. Beretta has made a sort of 3D version of the Zygo demo, but none of that holds a candle to this concoction of quads. Get a load of this title screen, packed with more vibe than a slowed down Sandra song. This fully 3D survival horror demo features thoughts of Silent Hill Boulevard intersecting with Biohazard Avenue. Frame rate stays cushy throughout, even with the bold choice to construct backgrounds with gons instead of pre-renders. You start in this flat, grab a couple items, then when you approach this mirror, you enter the dark version of your world, plunging you into what appears to be a rural 7-Eleven bathroom. No, it's just evil your bathroom. Outside, monsters lurk. They take a good number of bullets to dispatch, so conserve your ammo wisely. And also, maybe avoid having a seat on the tetanus couch. You find a photograph of a church. When you select it in your 3 dified inventory menu, it transports you to a church. This larger building requires a bit more exploration and problem solving, eventually sending you to the evil mirror church. Peep the shotgun. Get a load of the totally fifth gen face. Nice words, Octavius. If these executives knew you the way I do, I wonder if they'd be so quick to applaud. You find a photograph of a street. When you transport there, dope music plays, and Jay Beretta thanks you for playing. Now, I can tell this is a great demo because I really wanted there to be more game. This is fantastic. Great use of VDP2 effects, and the polygonal Saturn stank adds to the 5th gen horror tones. I want this to be a full game so bad. Hats off to Jay Beretta on this one. I think they have finally found the right direction for homebrew dev. Beretta's post reads, quote, Since I first started with Joe Engine in 2021, the plan was always to make a survival horror type game like Silent Hill slash Resident Evil, but I never thought it would be possible. It's not perfect, but it works-ish. Let me know what you think. I think you've found your calling in the homebrew scene. This cold case work in progress is fantastic. I can't wait to see where this project goes. For years, Trekkies Unite 118 put work into Saturn's Cinepak video format. His tweaking is now at a point where he can get vanilla hardware to play FMVs in pretty high quality, without a video CD card. For those who don't know, the Saturn has a video CD card port which you can use to play video CDs. It can be used in certain games that have higher quality cutscenes. This does not require the video CD card, it's just stock Saturn. He put together a demo reel of Cinepak conversions for things I cannot show you, like clips from Star Trek, Star Wars, anime, things that are illegal on YouTube. But I can probably show you some of the video game FMVs he converted. I don't think I'll get nabbed for those. Everything that I can and cannot show you look pretty damn good. Frame rate stays high and consistent. Colors and contrast look pretty great. Very few compromises are visible to get these to run on a stock console. I would recommend checking this out on your Saturn if you have the ability to boot unofficial games. If I showed you the clips, YouTube would have my head, and that's probably a good thing for Trekkies, since it means his Cinepak conversions are good enough to tick copyright bots. <laughs> A person who goes by not AI generated brings us a game that is not AI generated. This is Saturn Wordle. It is as it sounds, a Saturn port of the hit game Wordle. For those who don't know, Wordle is a word guessing game. You get six attempts to guess a random five letter word. The highlighted boxes tell you how close you are. Green means the letter is in the right spot. Orange means the letter is in the word but in the wrong spot and black means the letter is not there at all. Saturn Wordle only works with the Saturn keyboard. No other controller will do. Not even my Densha to go train controller. As such, anyone without a Saturn keyboard, like me, will need to play this on an emulator. Mednafen is recommended. Not AI generated provides some helpful setup tips. After wrestling around in Mednafi, I got it running. A tip from the dev. Press escape to start over before playing to properly seed the random generator. This is actually my first time playing any Wordle game, and I legit enjoyed it. The dev is using words from the New York Times list with the Deja Vu Sans Mono font. Thankfully, this uses white lettering over a black background, making this easy on the eyes. 
This utilitarian graphic interface gets the job done without looking bleak. My brain feels as if this takes up the correct amount of space on screen. It's just Wordle. It just works. Superb work. If you plan on updating this, you should try implementing light gun support for the memes. <laughs>
This is a work in progress port of an N64 Game Jam winner. Lambert James made the original game for the Nintendo 64, and a quick look at it shows a very well done homebrew platformer with engaging gameplay and some cute sounds. Telocation Gemini. I would definitely recommend this to N64 people. The Saturn port is being done by Cobra Dial, based on the game's original source. Keep in mind, this is still very much an early WIP demo, and Cobra Dial makes that pretty clear in the Sega Extreme post. The geometry is more simple than the N64 counterpart, which Cobra says can be improved. It is their first attempt at Saturn 3D, and with that in mind, the progress is pretty good. They do plan to improve the game engine and finish the whole port after the contest ends. Best of luck with finishing the project. May thoughts of sexy Santa motivate you through the end. <laughs> Cafe Alpha, one of the leads behind the unironically essential pseudo-Saturn software, submitted a game. Jackie Car is adapted from a graphing calculator game. You guys remember these? Did anybody else mess with these in school? Like, this was a huge part of middle school culture for me. It was just people loading up their calculators with cute little video games. This guy I know tried making a Metroid port. I don't know if he ever finished it. Cafe Alpha describes it best. Basically, it's like Outrun, but viewed from the top. And without beaches, without open cars. It shares some common points with Pong regarding the lack of fancy graphics. Sonic, regarding the choice of color of the road, and also Radiant Silver Gun, regarding the fact that score is displayed in the top left area of the screen. Taking notes from three of gaming's finest cornerstones, this is the Jackie Car of all time. Cafe Alpha notes, apparently there's some bonus demo for anyone who gets 999,999 points, but, I, I, you know, I'm not going to be able to do that. If someone else does, like... Just, like, DM me or something. <laughs> AM25 and Shadow Jackal are putting a lot of work into Saturn 3D, creating cute, complex demos like these that load sh tons of polys into a stock Saturn all willy-nilly. Look at how many quads fit into this bad boy. AM25 sent me some renders from an F1 racing game that they're working on, Peep the sponsorships from acclaimed beverage companies such as Bapsi and Asapi. But the demo they're submitting to the contest is this basic yet highly competent Sonic boss zone. Get a load of this! There's not much in the way of gameplay here, it's just a show of what their 3D can render so far. Something they whipped up quick for the contest. A nice water plane in VDP2 with VDP1 loading the arena, San, and Eggman. The duo released videos of previous projects with this engine, and they all look promising. Watching their Saturn stuff progress has been a delight, and I can't wait to see where this goes in the future. Alright guys, prepare your inner beings. VBT has named this file Best Entry, so we're sure to witness some god-tier excellence in Saturn programming achievement. Blast my eyes with buttery homebrew goodness. VBT proudly presents the BT Turing Truck Championship. Pinchy. Emperor Coconut. This truck selection menu features scaling sprites and a voice audio announcing the name of the vehicle highlighted by the lucky controller wielder. We got a winner in menu design, that's for sure. The Garfield-themed Crazy Taxi is, of course, my truck of choice. Mmm, VDP2 in use once again here, pumping the Saturn on at least two of its cylinders. Where am I driving on this infinite plane? I'm driving towards my destiny. This is my life now. <laughs> it's a four-player Cat-Girl tank game, featuring four arenas, Cat Girl Tanks, Parachute Dropped Power Up Items, and Customizable Time Settings. Utenya is a four-player Cat Girl Tank game. A simple game with a big collaboration between Ray Me of Sky Blaster fame, Henri Fox, Danny Duarte, AM25, and Random. <music> Tracks are fire, graphics have many quads, and the action is swell. I appreciate how this looks like you're controlling toy tanks on a table. 
Everything about this is real comfy. I love it. Only downside, there's currently no AI for computerized opponents. So this four player cat girl tank game is best played with real humans. Fire up the multi tap and become the ultimate fuzzy eared tank crew woman. Ervilsoft is taking a natural progression from their Chip 8 emulator of yesteryear. For this contest, the dev is submitting a Pico 8 emulator. For those who don't know, Pico 8 is a fantasy console meant to mimic 8-bit hardware. You can run this fantasy console environment in your internet browser to play a variety of low-res games. But despite how it looks, porting this to Saturn was no easy task. It's recommended Pico 8 players run the software with a processor that has at least 700 megahertz. A Saturn processor is at about 28, so that's like 4% of what's recommended. Youch. Yet somehow, Ervilsoft was able to pack this 8-bit planet into the rings of Saturn. Pico 8 games like Metal Gear Solid, Flappy Bird, and Fly God all run well. The post says some of the higher-end games have a handful of issues, but most of these appear to run without hiccups. Only downside is this emulator cannot do any sound. Herbalsoft says they just ran out of time to implement sound. Much like their Chip 8 emulator from last year, the menu design is outstanding. Great selection of cute little games, sure to entertain any Saturn appreciator for some time. The Sega Saturn multiplayer task force is back. We saw them pull together 12 player versions of Flappy Bird, Balloon Fight, and Asteroids. Now they're smacking us boldly with the 12 player version of Minesweeper. Sweeper Squad is capable of pitting 12 humans against each other on one console for a sweeping showdown. Practice alone, compete against friends, and enjoy the scaling cursor as it crashes into your screen upon death. Mega shout out to Slinga and the rest of the squad for expanding the Saturn's underserved capability to do massive couch multiplayer. Please, keep up this nonsense. When we talk about homebrew surpassing commercial Saturn games, CubeCat is a fine example of what this means. We have seen a few builds of our quadrilateral kitten over the years, with relatively humble beginnings in 2021, this already impressive 3D platformer evolved into a technical showpiece by 2022. Seven Shades sat out the 23 contest to reconstruct the game engine. Then, at the dawn of this contest season, Seven Shades built this demo just for fun to show off his progress at PRGE. He's not submitting this. It's just Peach's Castle loaded into Saturn hardware. This is ripped from the DS remake, used to show just how many polygons can fit into the level of detailed draw distance. With this engine, we are now being treated to the 2024 demo of CubeCat. Our cubic feline has some new moves. Behold the Pounce Dash. The Pounce can lock CubeCat in place, including in midair. This allows for some speedy and precise platforming as our fluffy friend skitters about. You start in this hub world. Like Spyro or Crash, you can enter level portals from here. Adjustable draw distance in the pause menu lets you experiment with just how much of the level you can render at once. It starts at 800 by default. I can put this in the lower 1000 range without compromising the frame rate. It's damn impressive. With all these polys loaded into VDP1, VDP2 loads these beautiful sea floors and sky elements. This comfy felt art style shines bright beneath the big blue sky. New this year, you can now attack the cube rats. Pounce dash them off the cliff to sumo them into oblivion. Instead of being required to bring the yarn ball back to the beginning of the level, your win condition is to obtain the level's sacred stitch. CubeCat can still use the yarn ball to jump really high. This demo also introduces these floating red shapes that give your jump a boost if you dash into them. After beating the first level, we are treated to an environmental showpiece for the second and final stage of this demo. Notice how big the trees are. Look at how VDP2 is rendering the blue water below and a big green set of treetops cleverly placed beneath the sky layer. Also, did I mention the music?
It's the same as in the 22 demo, but man, it's so good. It feels like CubeCat is at a point where the only way to go is closer to a full game. Whatever Seven Shades decides to do moving forward, we can appreciate this as a technical achievement in what 3D platformers can look like on Saturn. This is up there with the big kids. It can knock out Ninpen and Box with Croc or Sonic Jam Overworld. Its draw distance capabilities are close to Spyro, and the vibes are a unique creation of its own. I can safely speak for most Saturn fans in saying we are excited beyond belief to see CubeCat expand. Keep up this outstanding work and take all the time that you need. Up next is the Translations, Hacks, Patches category. These are modifications of commercially released Saturn games. JB is back and ready to solve a double murder case in Chicago. How was Miss White related to Angie? I no idea. I'd like to know the answer to that myself. In last year's contest, Arjack submitted a very early English patch for JB Herald Blue Chicago Blues, just translating the prologue in this two-disc FMV mystery adventure. The original version on Sega Mega LD was released in both the US and in Japan. When River Hillsoft ported it to Saturn, they only released it in Japan. This patch takes the English scenes and converts them to work on the Saturn port. Arjack is submitting a massive update from his previous submission of this patch, now a complete build. We went from just the prologue to the entire game translated. What incredible progress. You ever feel like quitting? Not yet. Yeah, yeah I've been a detective about uh, six years. I don't know, every now and then I feel like getting out, but hell, I've been a cop so long, I guess I can't be anything else. I should note, Dura Lumen and Kate Olivia Pierce are credited for helping with translation efforts, and Shadow Mask is thanked for restoring the English audio. Someday, I will sit down with this two-disc detective game and comfortably power through it all on a rainy afternoon. Well done, and thank you for taking the time to translate a more obscure Saturn game. I got you some coffee. Thank you. Oh, God. My head hurts like hell. Uh-huh. This is a great mod for anyone who really enjoys Shining the Holy Ark and are looking for a good reason to play it again. This hard mode patch from Recopso ups the game's difficulty in a variety of ways, along with a few other fun additions. It allows you to get items previously unused in the base game, changes around treasure and shops, changes where monsters spawn, fixes minor bugs, unlocks sound tests, and throws in new shortcuts for the world map. This is meant for anyone who loves the game and are looking for that next challenge. I personally have never played Shining the Holy Ark up until now trying out this hard mode mod. Thinking I was going to get decimated, I somehow made it past the first fight. I love how the 3D dungeon crawling plays out, and the turn-based fighting is fast-paced and entertaining. You know, don't take it from me, there's a million people who've played this game and say it's really good. The plot gets kind of wild, and it makes me want to finally get around to playing this. Why did I wait this long to give it a go? Who knows? Anyway, great mod. <laughs> This feels like a port of a PC dungeon crawler. The cursor is a focal point to both menuing and real-time combat. You get a million options, and just look at this thing. It screams dingy era of this genre before Morrowind clones got their shit together. But no, this is but a humble Sega Saturn exclusive. Dungeon Master Nexus from Victorsoft never left the islands of Japan. And while I wouldn't consider this a top-end Saturn adventure, it's still a shame this never made it to other territories. I feel like anyone who appreciates From Software's early catalog might get a kick out of this, even through its jank and relative sluggishness. 
Christoph F. is now making this playable to Westerners with an English patch. They note, neither Japanese or English is their first language, so there might be room for improvement. There is still spoken Japanese dialogue in the cutscenes. This translation has gone through a lot of changes since its first few releases, certainly enough to get you through the combat and exploration that this game is mostly built with. Take some time to get used to the jank, and you might have some fun with this one. <laughs> Treasure's run-and-gun shooter, where color matching is key to success, is getting an English patch for its Saturn installment. Rasputin 3000 is taking the text from the English PS1 version of the game and injecting it to the Saturn port. This is mostly done, I think all of the text is here. Now we can finally live in a world where English understanders can play Silhouette Mirage on Saturn. For those who have not tried it, I think this is one of Treasure's finest games. It's thoroughly entertaining. You can explore the depths of its gameplay and combat mechanics, or stick with the basic shots and still tear through. This trends towards Treasure's more cutesy art style, and just so happens to have outstanding music. Malenko and Sonic CD123 helped build this patch. Sonic 3D Blast was the ultimate teaser to any Saturn fan wanting a polygonal Blue Boy bash. No joke, when they planned to release Sonic Extreme but realized it was not going to get done by late 1996, they put this port of 3D Blast in its place and said this at Macy's Parade. Sonic 3D Blast, deal with it! To make the tease worse, the bonus stages in this port are polygonal. So like, dumb lore aside, these bonus stages are kinda dope. You're on rails, or on tubes, able to move left and right as you move forward. You must collect a set amount of rings before each checkered flag, while dodging or jumping over those spiky balls. Have you ever wanted to just play the bonus stages? Well, now you're in luck. B. Bayless is calling this a code golf entry. Sonic 3D Blast, oops, all special stages, makes it so the game only loads special stages. You just play them continuously. No isometric levels at all. It's a fun little patch. I appreciate its simplicity. Four years have passed since first contact. This massive translation and dub is complete. From a huge group of people led by Lacquerware, this fantastic space combat game is now fully playable in English. They're bringing in much of the voice talent from their past Bulk Slash patch, along with a few newcomers. All units have reached the scanning point. Very good. Undock your support craft and start scanning. To top it off, the ambitious project even has kudos from one of the original devs by way of a tweet. Nice. Kite 3, initiating scan. Developed and published by Sims, Stellar Assault SS is a highly enhanced port of its original 32X game. Man, should have known they wouldn't let us ease into this gig. Dogfight in space, don't actually fight dogs, but do take down giant ships that blow up in mesmerizing fashion. Getting in front of this thing will be a royal pain. Birdie, you handle the front. The game only came out in Japan, it was later in the Saturn's life, never translated or released in the West. Until now. Space-time tone is detected. ID signal confirmed. Language changing is not the only feature. This patch also adds mission stick support. That is a very welcome change, and anyone who owns this peripheral needs to try playing this game with it. To me, it feels like it was designed to be played with the stick. I also would like to point out, these cutscenes had to have music and sound re-edited back in after the dub, since dialogue was not a separate track in the game files. Shout out to Shadow Mask for all the redub work here. That is a steep task. Captain, save the dumb jokes for later. We're coming up on the mission area. Whoops. Sounds like those two aren't the only ones with emotion chips. Captain. We hardly ever see translation undertakings like this. The fact that this fan base can enjoy such a project put together by so many people for free is just tremendous. Mission complete. 
All units return to base. A big thank you to the entire team for helping bring us the Sega Saturn experience that Japan got to enjoy. Bad guys are escaping! <laughs> Another Sonic mod from B. Bayless, this time for Sonic Jam. Sonic Jam! For those who don't know, Jam is a port of the first three Sonic games to Saturn, featuring a bonus section where we can see they went through the trouble to build a very good looking 3D platformer engine for Sonic, but still didn't make it into a fully fleshed out game. Sonic Jam Tales World replaces Sonic with Tails in this jaunt through the game's bonus content. Miles has got some serious hops in this one. Apparently, it takes just 8 bytes of code to turn Sonic into Tails and give him the ability to fly. So, in another round of code golf, B. Bayless gets an easy birdie. Great birdie! You played better than I expected. Our visual novel codesmith, G. Sansigolo, is making his first debut in the Hacks Patches Translations category with the Portuguese patch of Sakura Taisen. This dating sim mecha strategy RPG has had an English patch for a few years now. This contest season, a homebrewer known as Gapi Colo led a team of translators, including Sansigolo and Monaki, to bring this game to the Portuguese speaking audience. Daniel just helped with graphics and the tools they're using to crack the text from the English patch crediting Noah Steam and Trekkies Unite 118. It seems to be pretty much complete, a big win for the widespread Saturn fanbase throughout Portugal and Brazil. The only downside is the patch files are designed to be applied to the CD Romance upload of the English patch instead of just patching the Japanese original. This makes installing the patch kinda difficult, especially since CD Romance recently got nabbed by legal teams. Hopefully they find ways to make this patch more accessible, but if it's built from the patched English version, that might be tough. Either way, this is great for the Portuguese-speaking Saturn fanbase, which is kinda widespread. <laughs> This undertaking by Knight of Dragon not only translated this entire multiplayer strategy game to English, but he also re-implemented its online play. It's the same tooling he made for the past contest season. Shadows of the Tusk, a Hudson Soft joint, only came out in Japan, leaving its netplay action outside the Western world. Now you can play this game, understand it, and do so with people from all across the world. There is some plot, but the experience mostly revolves around battling. The battles are fast-paced, sort of playing out like a quick and dirty Magic the Gathering match. I recommend you all try this out, even if you do not have Netlink. Knight submitted Netlink software in the Tools category, so I'll talk more about that later on in the video. A much-anticipated English patch is finally underway, and the effort is being led by one of the scene's most prolific translation patchers, Trekkies Unite 118, who brought us the Grandia patch and played a key role in the Sakura Wars patches, is now firing up efforts on a patch of Shin Megami Tensei Devil Summoner Soul Hackers. We've seen this title stay locked in Japan on both Saturn and PS1 until more than a decade later, when a slightly enhanced port came to the Nintendo 3DS. The patch being submitted this year is very much an early work in progress. The Saturn's game text is cracked, the translation is already done on 3DS, now it's just a matter of figuring out how to fit it in, and figure out what text actually belongs in the Saturn game. Trekkies told me a little bit about the insanity that's going on here. He says, the 3DS port's coding is based on both the PS1 and Saturn originals. Some of the text files are ripped from the Saturn game, others literally using PS1 files, all with English just shoved on in there. To further complicate things, the 3DS has a bunch of new stuff not seen in the originals, so Trekkies has to sort out what text actually belongs in the Saturn port, 
recode text files that were based on the PS1 port, and then deal with fitting the text in the Saturn's boxes. Text lines are slightly longer on the 3DS, so he's figuring out how to keep these lines from breaking. In this work in progress, I was able to comfortably get a couple hours into the game while only faced with some untranslated Japanese. Much of the battle text also needs to be translated, so I didn't really know what my attacks or items did until I tried them, for the most part. This patch is a very promising effort thus far. I'm just thrilled that this is being translated at all, and I know the project is in very good hands. Private Eye removes Radiant Silver Gun Text from top right corner. Doom is a classic Saturn head-scratcher. There are puzzle pieces of background info floating around about why Saturn Doom is what it is. I'll give it to you straight, the port just plain sucks. It's insanely slow and it's missing stuff. In a world where Quake, Duke, and Power Slave run so well on this machine, there was no excuse for Doom to run at virtual highlight speeds. Some form of game dev hell caused hell to become a PowerPoint presentation on Saturn. Fafling's Doom JPN fix aims to speed things up a bit while making several small fixes to the base game. It activates the unused main menu music, corrects sound effect audio levels, runs audio in stereo, throws in nightmare specters, and increases the frame rate ever so slightly. Faffling acknowledges it still dips into slideshow territory. But still, I'm all about fixing Saturn Doom. It absolutely should be a game that runs well on this console. Hopefully we can see these fixes keep coming in over time. I just love that homebrewers are looking into this at all. Ross is coming back after his Tomb Raider texture mod with two Sega Rally texture mods, featuring an AI voiceover replacing the intro bit. Sega Rally XL. One of the mods does things like put the Sega logo on the back of the Celica. The other mod outright replaces the playable vehicles with computer opponent models. One major downside is this mod appears to be made for the PAL versions of Rally. So any NTSC machine won't be able to run this without significant frame rate issues and a blown up resolution. The patch is also somewhat more difficult to install than normal, electing to use a patching tool that's more common for PS1 games. The third and final category is Tools Utilities, expanding the capabilities of the hardware and its games. Recopso, the same person who brought us Shining the Holy Ark hard mode, is also submitting their Shining Force 3 toolkit, this is a set of software for anyone interested in editing the files of all three Shining Force 3 scenarios. They note, the program is a little difficult to use, but they do function. Very cool, and should be useful for anyone looking to make their own Shining patches. Drekkies Unite 118 submitted his latest version of the Film Muxer for converting videos to Cinepack. It does so with separate audio and video files that are properly reworked to fit into Cinepack constraints and require the use of a much older Mac operating system. For homebrewers, this is a great tool to convert cutscenes to other languages, add subtitles, or put in custom cutscenes into original games. Maybe custom cutscenes into official games. Do your thing. A highly valuable asset for the homebrew community. Christoph F. is releasing the tools he used to edit the text files in Dungeon Master Nexus. This should be useful for anyone wanting to translate it to another language, or maybe try their hand at improving the English patch. Again, this is meant for homebrew devs who know their way around a few lines of code, but with enough elbow grease, anyone can figure out how to patch a game. Take it from SSG. Many of Saturn's homebrewers came into this with little to no experience, at a time when there were very few tools released by the community. So now we have lots of tools, including this one. Pretty cool.
Night of Dragon is releasing a version of the Kronos emulator that can play Netlink games. This includes cross-play with people running Netlink on real Saturns and the Yabause emulator. It's a continuation of his Netlink efforts from last year. The efforts to make Netlink more accessible to modern-day console owners is already robust. This further expands the potential player base, setting a much lower barrier to entry than ever before. Oh damn, oh I'm dead. Last is the fan favorite 240p test suite. Hitomi 2500 ported this commonly used tool to the Sega Saturn, designed to help CRT owners calibrate their screen geometry. Ranking these games is always tremendously difficult. Anyone who places on the lower end still deserves to be proud of their work. All of these homebrew devs have contributed to the explosion of the modern day Saturn scene, and all have done their part to make this an even more enjoyable machine. Breathing more life into this fan base is impossible to measure with numbers, it's all priceless. That said, we're being asked to rank the entries per category. Each of the nine judges submit their ranks. Those ranks are all added up together and reordered golf style. You can find individual judge rankings and the final winners at the homebrew contest thread on SegaExtreme.net. I'll post a link with this video. I would also like to highlight the many Saturn homebrew projects from 2023 that were not submitted to the contest. There are many. Mobile Suit Gundam and Bomberman Fight English patches are both still in progress. There were also a lot of French fan translations last year, including Brain Dead 13, Frankenstein Through the Eyes of the Monster, Mist, Shinobi X, Shanghai Triple Threat, WWF WrestleMania, Prisoner of Ice, A Stall, Blue Chicago Blues, and Need for Speed. Hooray France! Saturn's Mr. Core is at near full compatibility thanks to the extremely hard work from SRG320. This guy is from Ukraine and did a lot of these updates while avoiding Russian invaders. The fact that he was able to work on this throughout the Russian invasion is pretty insane. Hats off to this guy. There is now a complete English patch of Baroque for the Saturn. Palmette and the Medusa team released their ultimate patch for Castlevania Symphony of the Night. This has their performance enhancements and an English translation. Hot Rod X is porting X-Men Arcade Remastered to the Saturn. The Sakura Wars 2 English translation is still being worked on. We saw a preview of that last year. English subtitles were added to R question mark MJ Mystery Hospital. The Tomb Raider expansion Unfinished Business was ported to Saturn. There's now a USB analog adapter for the 3D controller pad. Deep Fear and Resident Evil now have Spanish translation patches. Prisoner of Vice got an English patch. And Tactics Ogre also has an English patch now. A big thank you to everyone who's played their part in the Saturn homebrew community this year and in years past. We appreciate you expanding the Saturn homebrew scene every year, which in turn expands the Saturn scene overall, makes more games accessible, and brings us new experiences on this console that many of us thought weren't possible. It's been a treat to watch this scene grow over the years, and a big thank you to Dr. Emerald Nova for having me on as a judge for the past four years. I love making these videos, I love highlighting the homebrew community. Thank you all for watching, and have a great day. Garfield and gentlemen, ladies and friends.